what we are going to be doing today is installing a B&M short shifter that Andy so luckily found in a junkyard. Found a B&M shifter in an MX-6 and he just pulled all the shift rods and everything with it. This came off of a four cylinder. So we're going to see if the four cylinder shift linkages are going to be the same as the V6. So uh, got a really neat video in store for you today. Look how low that sucker is. Now you will notice on the MX-6 when Andy releases this that the front end is going to lean forward. You can watch the back. The back will kind of raise up. And the first time I encountered that, it kind of scared me because it looks like the entire back of the car is going to raise up so much that it's going to roll forward. So keep that in mind if it's the first time you're ever jacking up an MX-6. V6. That looks about a stock pipe, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's make sure. Can you stick your head in there? Oh, yeah, yeah that's about stock height. Stock height, yeah. <laughs> and removing the shifter is fairly easy, but putting it back together is kind of the hard part. Want to show them the uh, difference, what makes this a short shifter? It basically changes the uh, fulcrum, fulcrum point. It makes this, this part, longer, which makes it throw shorter. Actually, we'll show you that um, when we get the other one out. Yeah. We'll, we'll compare them side by side and yeah, show yeah. you just how much longer it is. And that's what the B&M short shifter looks like. It has a blue anodized cylinder that comes with it. And that's how Andy recognized this at the junkyard. When he went and pulled back this, you could see a blue anodized cylinder in there. It's all greased up so you can barely see it. Yeah. But it's, can, it's there. You can barely see that, but that blue, see, yeah, now you can see it. See that blue anodized ring? That's a telltale sign that this is a B&M. Why would you want a B&M? Well, there's a problem with the, I mean, you can buy a short shifter from eBay, a real cheap one. The problem is, uh, has been documented that the eBay short shifters will break and leave you stranded. Can't shift without a shifter. Because they're aluminum. Yeah, they're crap. And this is a high quality shifter from B&M, uh, made out of titanium and fairy dust. It, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably like steel. Yeah, but the point being, Andy has become a junkyard pro and knows how to spot stuff. And just from that tiny little ring, he, he realized that that was a B&M. So and also the um, the shape of the shifter and the little markings and just the whole, sh it, it looks it looks different. Definitely not stuck. It also sits, uh, it's probably about maybe inch and a half shorter in height than the uh, stock shifter as well. And the stock shifter is black, not shiny. Less. Tab that goes like this and it hooks behind that. So you have to pull this part up first? Yeah. Oh, it's broken. That part right there. Hmm? Oh, that was loud. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's nothing. That's just the plastic itself. I can uh, get some epoxy or something. To yeah. That again. And there you go. All right, and this is just a... Uh, a fire retardant material and sound deadening for your shifter. Fire retardant? Not so sure. No. <laughs> that was like it was flame right up. <laughs> nope. Well, that's what I imagine. So it's just sound deadening. Right? Is that slop? <laughs> yeah, that right there, that's slop. Yeah, that's slop. Because it's not, I'm not even like really going out towards the. Uh... Yeah, it shouldn't be loose at all. Yeah, that's pretty loose. Now, I think we should do the bottom first, and then these are the last ones before it drops down. I don't know, man. You sure you don't want to swap the parts out? Use this stock one instead? This boot looks great. Never mind. Okay, never mind. No. We go. got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go under the car. Let's go down below. Now, the first thing that you can do before you get to your shift links, as I've detailed in other videos, is to remove the heat shield. <laughs> and you have to get those with PB Blaster. There are four bolts holding the heat shield in. 10 millimeter. You're gonna need somewhat of a deep well socket, just slightly deeper than, you know, normal. Otherwise, you're gonna be using a wrench. Yeah, you don't wanna do that. And you do not wanna strip those bolts. Oh yeah, take your time with it. Because if you strip those, then you're gonna have to pull back the carpeting in order to replace them. And if you strip those bolts and your heat shield comes down, it will rattle on your, um, your exhaust system, more specifically in this case, if you have the stock exhaust system, your resonator. That's a resonator. It looks like it's been changed, you see? Oh, this is new. Yeah, that's not the stock resonator. The stock resonator is much longer. That's a big catalytic converter. Yeah, it is. That's much bigger than the one on the i4. Oh, this is getting hot. <laughs> that's weird. Oh, look, it broke off. That's going to shoot off, brush? Too. Huh? Yeah, brush. 
Uh, those threads are like yeah. retarded. Oh, that's pretty hot. Really? From the friction. Wow. And there's the other one. Yep, sheared right off right inside of it. That's all right. Another 10 millimeter uh, nut will just fit right up. Yeah, it's still got threads on there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got plenty of those. Yeah, we're going to have to brush these threads, get all the rust off of those threads before we even think about reinstalling. There you go. Now you're under. See it? There's a straight piece. That's not on mine. What are you doing? At the very top here. This, this isn't straight from here all the way up. There's a straight piece that comes this way off of it. That's kind of catching a little bit. And then this doesn't want to go far enough back. Yeah, we got that. Look, it's got an arrow on there. It means um, it goes this way when you reinstall it. Okay, heat shield off. That's a lot of slop. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. That's slop. And that looks like it's from the transmission side. Yeah, that's on the, tra the transmission bushing. Well, let's go see how your uh, transmission bushings look. Now that's why it's, there's so much slop on the shifter. Is it just the bushing? It's everything down there. Like, yeah, it's a bushing. It's like, it, there shouldn't be no movement, actually. Yeah, that should be stiff. It's got to be the shifter bushings because of the... Uh, it should be on the... There should be a through bolt that goes all the way yeah, to that, the bottom. Yeah, that's the one. That's okay. the one. Now, is there a nut on the end of that bolt? Yep. Okay. So usually, you can just tighten that down. It'll make it a little bit tighter. And unfortunately, there is just not enough room for me and the camera and Andy in order to get all this under there so that I can record this for you guys. So what he's doing now is removing the bolt from the shift linkage on the transmission side. But he's also going to remove that. That one also just has a uh, one bolt and there are going to be two big washers that drop down when you loosen that one. Alright so I'm coming in from the front of the car and I'm trying to loosen that bolt. That one right there. So I used a breaker bar with a 14 millimeter socket and once I got that one loose I used a 14 millimeter wrench and that one comes up. That's what holds the shifter uh, assembly in place. It's like a torque bar. Uh, I'm not sure what size it is. It looks small. I'm gonna guess a 14 or a... Maybe 12. Have to remove the shift rod from that. Get that out of the way. In order to pull the shifter apart you are going to want a pair of snap ring pliers. I have done it with a paper clip. You get two ends of a paper clip and you can kind of squeeze them together. It is possible. It probably took me about an hour to do that, but it is possible. First, you want to remove this boot and you're going to have to get your fingernail underneath of here and start prying up around the sides here until you can get that lip to show. And then this whole thing just pries off the top. This is a real deep lip under here. Be careful not to break your rubber. And also, do not just yank, do not just take this whole thing and yank up. Otherwise, you will rip the rubber around here. It's best if you lube this whole entire shaft up with silicone. If you're in a pinch, just use some PB Blaster on it. Just a little bit. And let it run down. And you just lube up the whole thing like so. Off she comes. Okay, so now that you can kind of see in here, you have access to your snap rings here. Your snap ring pliers in here. After you get the main snap ring, then there's this Teflon coated white ring that also needs snap ring pliers. And once you get that out, then this whole ball will just come right out. And these two happen to be right there. You can see the split there. What you could do is get the screwdriver. Because this is Teflon, you can swing that whole thing around. Swing that around so it's at an angle that's easier. I can't see how this is going to come up. Uh, oh, wait. I think you actually have to overlap them. What right. you want to do is use one of the pins from the pliers, the snap ring pliers, stick it in one of the holes. And you want to try to 
hook this side up and lift it up, get the screwdriver underneath it, and that's it. That's all she wrote. Work it up. Ta da! Yeah, there should be one more piece. It's just like a little boot, which is what the cylinder is for the BMM. And it's uh, aluminum. Yes. Get out of there. You can take the rubber boot off the bottom. I don't know. How do you take out the rubber boot? Yeah, it is a rubber boot. How do you take it out? Well, it, there's a knuckle, like so, on the bottom of the short of the shifter, right? On the bottom of the shifter arm. You have to take the rubber around this irregular shape off the rod and around the shape, which means using your screwdriver again. You see that rubber? That's that's all that's that's holding it in. You just push it up. Yeah. Now you are very prone to breaking the rubber seal on the bottom doing it that way. The best way would probably be to go under the car and pull it off the bottom. So it looks like we're going to be taking that one apart. I was trying to convince you it's not really that hard. It's just a matter of doing it. And to you're replace just, the seals and you didn't want to do it exactly. I was like, it, no, it's going to happen anyway. So you learn the hard way sometimes. Inside there, right? Yeah, this was around a lip. See that lip right there? Mm -hmm. That was caught. Where the hell was that lip? No, it was caught right here. You can see that lip right there. All right, so when you push this from the top, it like like Exactly, it. it grabs it on either way because it's a dual lip, I guess you might say. Yeah, it catches this. Yep. So, just a little bit of persuasion. Don't know how everything goes back together. <laughs> no, but we got two videos on that now. Oh, wait, no, you never explained that on the one video where you were like, Gollum, Gollum. I don't know, you said some golem quote, I can't remember what it was. That's the one where you're on the garage floor and you're like, my precious, and you're messing with the shifter. My precious! It's Success! Yes, yes, my precious. Just gotta think about precious shifters. The MX-6 ones are different. Those are different than the ones that I have. It will make sense to be different. <sighs> oh, crap. What? I, I don't have that middle cylinder. That's what's different. Okay, so this little cylinder there, right there, don't need it. I wouldn't say that. Don't need it. No, because I'm running without it, and I'm just doing just fine. No, I need it. Look at that. Yeah? Okay. The bolt is made to fit in here, not in here. See the size difference? I used a washer and a bigger bolt. Well. I modified mine. DJ Devin 3 Special. All right. <laughs> don't tell people they don't need that thing. Okay, fit. you need that thing unless you know what you're doing. First impressions of comparing the I-4 rod versus the V-6 rod. What's that? You sure it came off an I-4? Oh yeah. Yeah? I'm pretty sure I could tell the difference between an FS motor and a KL. I don't know, sometimes it ripped out. I don't know. Oh no, no, it was, it was in there. Okay. So it looks the same, man, to be honest. So, I don't know who said that they're different, but... Similar on the NX-6 forms. In my case, they seem to be the same. Yeah. I concur. They are exactly the same. I believe the car was a 1993. Okay. My car is a 1994 V6. And... Looks the same. Same to me. It doesn't come out, but look, it's cut square. Oh, that's neat. That is pretty neat. Oh, these are, um... O-rings. In, uh, in these grooves right here, there are rubber O-rings. You go all the way around on the top and the bottom. There's two rubber o rings. That's pretty neat. Oh yeah, I can get that. Get in there, man. Pliers. That's already really pretty loose. Oh, there is no white. There was no white disc. <clears throat> that was all that was holding it in was the snap ring. It looks like somebody butchered this. Yeah, it does. It looks like they ground it yeah. in order to fit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then on the top as well. Yeah, that's a lot shorter. There's the electrical tape. I don't think that ball's supposed to come out out of this, uh, I think it's permanently in there. 
But I, I wonder what that's all about, that grinding, you know? Oh, I know. It's because they had an issue getting it into the lip. Getting it past that lip down there. Yeah, it's supposed to be, like, hard, because this feels hard, and this is all mendable. It's probably because of the grease they're using. I bet you they use packing grease, which deteriorated. So a little bit of PV blaster does a trick to take the uh, the boot out. Of course, this is still attached by by this, which is fine. I'm just taking it apart to see what it looks like. So let's compare my car, the MX-6, and that's the one I got from the junkyard. Yeah, it is for This one is the V6, and this one is the I4. As you can see, the V6 is shorter than the I4. This looks like a straight line. This looks like it curves, it has a different shape. Now you can use the uh, the other part. Those are interchangeable. The actual shift are like this. Yeah, this, these two, this part is not. And this is the part that has the shifter plate attached to it. This part is not interchangeable. Okay, now we have the shifter installed how he wants and got all the bits and bobs on there, got everything swapped over to the uh, V6 shifter. Remember the I4 was too long. So that's not going to be compatible. So we had to uh, swap over everything from the i4 BNM to his VC, uh, V6 shift link. And now we have that, and we are just about ready to install. Now we've uh, raised this up, bolted it in, tightened down both bolts, um, both rods on the transmission side. Now all we have to do is tighten this up. We tried swapping out the bushings, and that didn't really work because the bushings that we have are worn out best thing to do would just be to get some new bushings, but in the meantime, what we're going to do is use some electrical tape and wrap that around the bushing to make that fit in there tighter. That's electrical tape around the, the bushings. And we found the B&M shifter came like that. The bushings were already electrical tape, so we were like, well, that's a good idea, so we'll just continue with that and put it in there in order to get rid of the slop. Hopefully, in the, that's just going to be a short-term solution. In the future, we'll come back and put some new bushings in here. But in the meantime, that's going to get rid of the slop. And that's something that you can do temporarily if you don't want to get new bushings. I mean, as long as you're in there and you have the opportunity to fix the slop, if you're just going to try and get in there to fix the slop, get new bushings. And Andy just put the heat shield back on. So now, the only thing left to do is hook up the shifter. I want to show first. <laughs> that was first. Oh, you want to show the uh, the chrome and the uh, handles and all that? Yeah, it's got a uh, chrome e-brake handle. Now he's got chrome door handles, as well as black center console from uh, Black MX-6. the uh, BNM short shifter short throw shifter so it's actually uh, short as well shorter than stock stock would see that like this high first <laughs> it is so short it's such a short throw I gotta get used to it <laughs> 